What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here, back with another video. In this video today, I wanna to talk all about the overhead press. I get a lot of questions on increasing your overhead press, namely because, I don't know if you guys know, in the last year, I did increase it by 10 pounds. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but the overhead press is really tricky to increase in weight, unlike the squat, bench, or deadlift, where if you're kinda of just consistent, it'll go up. The overhead press is really a test, as far as I'm concerned, of overall upper body strength. That is because you need that total body tension, you need that ability to brace with your core, your entire core, your whole body, that torso rigidity that we talk about, total body tension, and then just to have a really strong upper body. And I'm talking namely about the medial uh, delt, the anterior delt, and then the triceps would be the primary movers that we're talking about here for the overhead press. But I made two videos prior, they were very well received. If you haven't checked those out, link will be in the description. This is kind of the third part I'm gonna talk I think today I have four solid tips about the overhead press, uh, four more solid tips. So first, what I wanna say when I observe a lot of individuals doing the overhead press, it would be that they grip it too wide. And here's what I mean. It's not like the bench press. Like if you notice my bench press, I grip relatively wide, right? That's because I'm more pec dominant. And I've heard some people say that the grip on the overhead press should be the exact same as the grip on the bench press. And this is just flat out wrong. Here's why. It kinda has to do with stacking when it comes to the overhead press. I'm gonna talk about the role of the lats in a second and just overall your rectors, thoracic extension, and how you just line everything up so you have a strong, stable base, a shelf to press off of, which is really important. If you go too wide, what's probably gonna happen, because once again, you wanna exert that external rotation force where you're kind of pulling the bar apart, is you're gonna internally rotate too early. And so essentially at that bottom portion, you're just gonna bleed far too much power. So people grip the bar too wide. How wide should you grip it? This depends upon the individual, but a quick good rule of thumb will be somewhere along the lines of take a shoulder width grip and go a little bit outside of that, and that should probably be your overhead press grip. Because what we start with, we kind of start with our elbows in front, we have that external rotation, we're exerting that force, we're pulling the bar apart, and then from there what's going to happen once we're lined up here, the bar is just resting you know, comfortably on our clavicle, is that we're going to press and then gradually a little bit of that internal rotation is going to occur. But we want to have the last stack, that perfect body position, and if we're too far out, we'll internally rotate too early. So we want to have a strong start and a strong finish. For those reasons, think about that idea of like your lats, like kind of your elbow, your tricep underneath. It's resting where you feel your lat when you flare, and kind of that serratus anterior is that good sweet spot that you want to have. So the first tip I'd say is a lot of people grip it too wide, just outside of shoulder width. The second thing that I want to talk about is once again the role of your lats. When you're doing an overhead press, unlike the bench press, the bench is assisting you, you're pressing off of it. You got nothing on the overhead press, you got nothing. All you got is the bar on your body. You're standing straight up. You gotta use your quads, you gotta use your glutes. If you don't engage all these things, you're gonna shake like a motherfucking leaf. And I know because I used to do that because I wasn't bracing effectively. And people kind of talk about the core and they always say like the core, the core, brace your abs. Yes, no doubt about it. We've talked about that, we've talked about the glutes, we've talked about all those things but not enough love goes towards the lats in terms of the role for the overhead press. And here's what I mean. You don't press quite in a straight line with the overhead press. Think about it. I got, once again, that, I got that Natty King job right here. If I was to press in a straight line, I would just off myself immediately, right? Like it would hit me right in my chin. So kind of what you do, it's a little bit of a curve but you'll notice anyone, and I mean anyone, if you look at weightlifters, if you look at guys that are really strong on the overhead press, they all intuitively know this, but a lot of people don't talk about it. Look at Klokov, right, where he has a great, uh, you know, uh, clean and jerk, he has a great push press, he has a great overhead press, but what you'll notice is that their spine isn't exactly neutral. Instead, what they do to initiate the movement, and I talked before in a previous video about activating, I'll help activate a little bit that upper pec, is that they'll extend with their thoracic area. So all that means, instead of being perfectly neutral like this, they extend ever so slightly. How do they achieve that? Not only with their erectors, but by flaring their lats. Your lats are a stabilizer when it comes to thoracic extension. So as soon as you kind of flare your lats, you'll notice, just take a look at yourself in the mirror when you do this, flare your lats, like you have you know, something underneath your arms, flex them, and you'll notice your chest will actually pop up a little bit, and this is a more ideal position to overhead press with. But not only that, once again, we want this whole area to be solid and tight, stable. We want that stable base to press off of. If our lats aren't engaged, what's likely gonna happen is that we're gonna have to really excessively lean far back. So either two things. One, we'll just like fail, 
or two, what will happen? When we go to over at press, we'll turn it into that incline bench where we'll shoot far back. What the roll of the lats are, they're preventing that excessive extension. We want a little bit in order to get the bar off of our chest, off of that clavicle area right there to begin the movement, and then we're going to press it back. So your lats as a stabilizer are very important on the overhead press. So don't forget to squeeze the shit out of your lats. That's why my two tips that I have work together. You see my setup. I do the exact same setup every single time. I want to talk about the third point before I get into that, external rotation. It's very important. No, the overhead press doesn't really train uh, your rear deltoids, but they are important in order to have a strong overhead press. Here's why. Like I said before, your shoulder, how it naturally moves. Some people, depending upon their shoulder girdle, what you'll notice, their elbows stay in front and they're kind of in that position where they're exerting a little bit of that external rotation, the whole movement. But a lot of people, it's not that way. Again, look at any people that do a lot of weight when it comes to the overhead press. Look at Chinese weightlifters are a very good example of this, that when they do just overhead press work in general, they'll start with that external rotation, so they're pulling the bar apart. But then when they press, their arm actually internally rotates at the top. And this is, once again, a strong, stable, natural movement. But in order to get the bar moving initially, exerting that external rotation force so you can blast up, keep the elbows tucked, activate the triceps, is very important. So you should be training your external rotators. Hello, face pull. The face pulls are a phenomenal movement. I've talked about them before. I'll link in the description a tutorial on face pulls, how to do them effectively. But just think about it. You do a whole lot of pressing. You're training your anterior delt, uh, your side delt. They get a lot of love. You got to make sure your rear delt gets the same amount of attention. So make sure, if you're wondering why, when you first lift on the overhead press and kind of your elbows just go whoop like that, they just flare out like that, you get that chicken wing action going on, it's probably because you need to work on your external rotator. So the two cues that I personally use before I overhead press, and that's why you see I'll line up and I'll kind of lean back. I'm feeling a little stretch in my lat, but what I'm doing when I'm back there in that position is that I'm exerting a little bit of that force, right? I'm pulling the bar apart, a little bit of that uh, external rotation to get the elbows. When I bring it under, I'm kind of cranking that bar, get the elbows under. But two, I'm pulling and I'm twisting with my lats. So those are the two things at once, external rotation, and then I'm using the lats eventually when I get underneath the bar to get that thoracic extension. And that's why you'll notice for me, my weakest uh, point, and we can talk about this later, would actually be my triceps because it comes towards that lockout where it gets really difficult. So external rotation, very important. Two cues you can use, pull the bar apart, and then as you're pulling it, as you're getting set up, think about keeping tension in your lats. Last point I want to talk about is that the overhead press, much like the deadlift, starts from a dead stop, and that is a unique portion of this movement. Think about the bench press. You unrack it, you have an eccentric, and then you have a concentric portion, so then you lift it back up. The overhead press is different. You unrack it, and right from the get-go, it's the hardest portion. So, much like I'd say the deadlift, you have to be incredibly aggressive with it. It starts from zero uh, acceleration. There's no velocity on the bar. You have to put a lot of force into that initial movement. And that's why kind of all these tips throughout these three parts are really about getting that strong start and then that strong finish. What you need to do when you finally decide to do the overhead press, you got all these keys, you're like, I'm going to externally rotate, I'm going to do all these things. Once you unrack it, I see a lot of people that kind of wait, they're thinking about a lot of things, they're contemplating their existence. You got to be ferocious when you do the overhead press. So you unrack it, and then immediately, I personally would say, after you feel comfortable, stable, strong, you're braced, everything feels good, you blast it, you explode up as fast and as hard as possible. It's even more important, like on the squat, I know some people, I'm one of them, you need to kind of work on that stability, you gotta feel the weight out. On the overhead press, you need to attack it. So that's my final point, that once you're all set up, once you got all these cues, you have to be incredibly aggressive. Guys, I've talked a whole lot about the overhead press. That's because I care a lot about it. I said that before. I want for this year is a huge goal, but damn it, why not? I want to overhead press 110 kilos, 242 pounds. It's going to happen. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video, and I'll tell you something. I actually have even more tips. Like I want to talk about accessory movements and a whole slew of other things. There's probably would be two more parts of part four and five. If you want to see this happen, make sure once again, and like this video, get it a 4,000 likes, hashtag down below, hashtag over at press. Else told me actually instead, my cameraman, it's better 5,000. 5,000 likes, you heard it. No, not 5,000. 10,000. That's not going to happen, bro. I, not that I don't believe you guys, but 10,000 is a lot of likes. 5,000 likes, 
Let's make it happen. Like the damn video. You made it all the way to the end. You're now equipped to overhead press more weight. I hope it helped you out. I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.